All right, so I have reached the end of my slides. I wasn't sure how much time I would have. I've got about 10 minutes left. Um, I'm available at this point for Q&A. I wasn't expecting to have much time, but I am, uh, if you want to ask some questions. It, otherwise, I left some stuff here for, uh, for follow-ups. Um, the one thing I want to say is that we have a booth. We're not selling anything in the booth, but we do have free t-shirts, and we don't want to take them home. So <laughs> if, you, if, you don't, if you don't have one of our shirts, please stop by and just get a booth. Get a shirt. We're not going to swipe you or anything. But got a question, bud. I presume you're using this somewhere on large distributed farms, or big companies are using it? We are, uh, no. The question is, uh, are big companies using this? No. Because um, I was wondering, how, how often do you have conflict? We are, uh, we're not that far along yet. We are currently dog fooding Veracity, and as far as we know, we're the only ones. Um, the source code was released like this week, so I think we are the only ones in the back here. Um, so for semi-even um, semi artificial can actually deal with, yes. is there a reason you didn't, uh, you're not just using type 5 U units, which are SHA-1s, and doing the same thing as Git and doing a prefix, which you can extend as much as you need to get unique, but it's usually, it's like six characters is usually plenty for any real world map. We've experimented with all kinds of things. The answer, the question is, why didn't we use Type 5 UUIDs, SHA 1s? Um, the main answer is that um, there's a tension between uniqueness and friendliness. Um, a lot of people, when they see bug IDs, are accustomed to the idea that they're integers that grow by one every time they add a bug. So we're trying to preserve that. Um, as I said, though, this is you know this is an area where we're still actively experimenting on with what works. Question: uh, If you just released it, is there any kind of non-source care community yet? Are you planning to have one? How are you? What kind of open source community? What, what? Uh, is there a non-source care community yet? Um, not really. We want one, I mean, in the sense that we're not releasing this as open source to make people write our software for us, I'll say that. Um, we do want to have a community of people who are interested in what we're doing and, and find ways for them to participate. We want to get to the point where we can receive code contributions from those who want to do so. We, we currently do not have any of those amenities yet. Uh, we'd like for Veracity to be able to host that itself, and that's one of the reasons why we don't. Um, so currently what we have is, Kind of a good old-fashioned tarball on a mailing list, which is pretty minimalist. We'll get better about that, but that's what we, that's what we want. Uh, this guy right here, and then I'll go back. I, I guess I'm a little confused. I mean, what you what you've described is it sounds like a version control system that could be used to version more than just code. But w have you actually applied it to other things? Like, do you have a bug tracker and a wiki and all these things that are using this? Uh, is that what you're releasing, or is that just hypothetical stuff? The question is, um, is this, you know, do we actually use this yet or is it just all hypothetical? Um, Veracity has a bug tracker in it now. Um, that, that's one answer. The, you know, the, I'm, I over geeked on this for a reason is I wanted this to be a real technical talk. Um, so I talked mostly about the architecture and some of the inner details. Um, however, I could have just as easily put up like shots of our burn down chart. And it works, you know, the stuff is working. Is it working for a node of a thousand people? No, not yet. We don't have any test cases like that. So, in some ways, we're farther along than I'm saying because we actually have um, features that use this product, uh, that use this architecture. But in many ways, since we're still experimenting with ways of doing the architecture, we're not that far along. I'm just kind of spreading ideas. Yes. Sir? Do you have uh, plans to release binaries? Uh, do we have plans to release binaries? Yes. Um, we didn't want to release binaries on our website the, uh, right away. Uh, the main reason is, if we release binaries, people might be tempted to try and use this thing. <laughs> 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 um, th no, in all seriousness, um, we're, we're actively telling the world this is not a 1.0 product yet. Don't depend on it. Um, we depend on it because we're dog fooding it, but we can't honestly say that either the file formats or the API are frozen yet. And if we were to change the file format when some other people are using it, we would be trying their patience very badly. So right now, no binaries, but we will post those as well. Just a question? Like, yeah, it seems like the resolution strategies are going to need to be extensible. Yep. 
Uh, yeah, it does seem that way, doesn't it? <laughs> you know, you're, you're, you've dealt with many, many situations, but not everything. Yes, the question is, uh, it seems like resolution strategies will need to be extensible. Um, if you look at the code, there's a couple of big to-dos in there saying, um, to-do, allow this to be a JavaScript hook, so you can write scripts that do resolution, resolutions however you want. Not done yet, but that providing scripting hooks is probably our answer to the extensible resolution. The, the spider monkey interpreter is already in veracity, so it's probably going to end up being JavaScript. Apologize, apologies to people who are, are already asking for Lua and Python, and you know, these are all great languages, but right now we have one. See any over here? Yes, sir. I'm going to talk for the enterprise or a lot of the data merging, etc. I'm curious if you're going to have any uh, methods to override the version data that's local. Uh, stay on us. I know it's not DBCS, but I'm saying you want to override some of the process that's distributed that's effective potentially. And you want to override the app by a simple process, which may be version as well. But to have it look or be able to look elsewhere to override various replicas that are around the company, they have a given amount available. Question I'm not sure I understand. Do we have so mechanisms to override? So replicated with your data, essentially mm -hmm. you're replicating the bugs, etc. Right. So some of that process may be uh, old. Maybe it's a, uh, some sort of an access control mechanism or something that you want to override centrally without having to push to all the replicas. You have a mode to override centrally, eventually. What's in the local world? I think what I I think my answer is. As soon as you said override it centrally without having to push to the replicas, I think my answer is no. Um, our mechanism for changing policy is to change it in one place and push it everywhere else. Um, we're, or another way to say it is, we're not putting in stuff that requires a live connection to the server. I mean, even our, you know, one of the things that we have, you know, somebody asked about, are we actually using this? Yeah, one of the features we have is a, is a Twitter-like feature. And even there, we're not requiring a live connection to the server. When you Twitter something, it goes into your local copy of the repo. When you push the change sets, they go elsewhere, and all of a sudden, Twitter tweets show up on your uh, uh, on everybody else's screen. Although we're not calling it Twitter or tweets because of obvious trademark violations, but that's that's what, how the feature works. So no live connections. So it might not require. Maybe you look for uh, something like that from Apple says update from this replica or force update from this replica. Boom, if it's there, of course. And you're asking an interesting question. Um, um, there's my email address. You can talk about it. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, do you guys look at cryptographic signatures on change sets, or is that for cryptographic signatures on change sets to make sure that what's being pushed and relayed from somewhere to somewhere else is actually what, what was originally sent? Yes. Um, it's not done yet. You will see um, a Veracity repo has lots of DAGs in it <laughs> because. Uh, the shape of your of one DAG is probably not the shape of your version control DAG. One of the DAGs in there is called signatures, and it's uh, there for the purpose of, of storing cryptogra cryptographic signatures on other change sets. Nothing is implemented for that feature yet, but we got some design docs and it's in progress. Okay. Design docs on the web? What's that? Are the design docs on the web? Yeah, probably not. I couldn't find them when I was looking yesterday. It would be awesome if they were, but... Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, a lot, of the, uh, a lot of the answers to the question about you know, why aren't we doing a better job interacting with the community are, yeah, we suck, you know. <laughs> we know, we're getting better. So, for change set IDs, you're actually using the, the two concatenated UUIDs and not some cryptographic checksum? Uh, actually, no. Change set IDs are a hash, very much like Git or Mercurial. In our case, um, I mean, the default hash for Veracity is SHA-160. Um, our repo is SHA-2256. Veracity supports, I don't know, half a dozen hashes on the constraint that once you set it, it's set for all time. So, so, you, so you won't be able to pick the hash in our repository and then eventually start using a starter one as the old version? Not without a data migration. Okay. Do you have a flexible file system? Um, yeah, we have what we call the repo API. It gives you pluggable storage layers so you can decide how you want to store your data. Uh, we currently have three implementations that are in the tarball now. Two of them store your data in just a, a file system structure. 
um, with an index file. Um, a third one actually stores all your data in SQLite. It's kind of the template we're using for experimenting with SQL databases. We have a couple of other implementations which store, like one of them stores all your data in Microsoft SQL Server. That one is not in the tarball, partially because it's not been kept up to date for the last few weeks and partially because it may be proprietary. So, um, we, bottom line, we have tested the ability to store data in a variety of different ways. And there again, we're kind of still experimenting with, hey, I think I'll do a new repo implementation and see if it's faster. So, the API gives us the ability to do that. So, the compelling thing that you talked about a lot is using it for distributed control of things that aren't source code. But people already have strong preferences about their DBCS tool of choice. Is there any way to support, or do you have plans to support, like, uh, DBCS of your choice front end on top of a veracity back end for this kind of integration that way? Uh, do we have plans to support DBCS tool of your choice? Um, plan would overstate it a lot. Uh, <laughs> have we thought about this? Yes. Um, because we thought about, you know, doing what we call adapters, where you could basically take a Git repo instance and wrap it in this thing and it would look like a veracity instance. A um, couple of thoughts that we have about that are, one is that, Kit and Mercurial are great. We're not out to convince the world to stop using them. Uh, the fact yeah, is... But it sounds like you have, like, you're selling this whole package that's wiki and bug tracking and you know, Twitter and all that thing. Uh, but you're, you're selling that package minus the EBCS that it seems like there's less of a version of that. Or are you saying, like, you should use all of our products except the EBCS product we have is not as good as, the, as Git or not as good as Mercurial? Wait, let me just clarify. Veracity does have a DBCS on it, right? Did I get that clear? Uh, yes. Okay, good. Um. <laughs> no, but, but you said, like, it's really compelling to me why you want just, uh, this new product for something besides version control, but you just said that you're not trying to replace version control. So how, how do you resolve that? A um, couple answers. You know, one is um, if you really want the features that Veracity has that Mercurial and Git do not, you have to switch. That's one answer. <laughs> Answer number two is um, the number of people in the world that use DBCS right now rounds to zero. Um, <laughs> the fact is, we we think this is the future of the industry. We want to be a, a viable a viable choice and a part of the story for the next million people who choose a source control system. Third answer is uh, yeah, I, I'd love to have an adapter that gives people a little bit. I mean, with these kinds of tools, you always want to give stepwise migration. Um, making people choose your tool and discard everything else is a, is a really good way to fail, and we understand that. Um, so, somebody else had a hand. Yes, sir. It seemed like the, the innovation here is the scale of the system. Like, you know, the scale of the system is way to configure the merging. Why couldn't that just be added to an existing system like Gator Material? It could. Um, and we're obviously not patenting this, so people are welcome to do that. That doesn't mean we're going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, I'm getting a signal saying cut it out. So uh, I'm going to have to stop here. I haven't checked my time. Any of the ways on the screen are available for follow-ups? I or anyone at Source Gear is welcome to, uh, eager to continue this conversation. So thanks a lot. Uh-huh. <laughs>